Hi, here's the key fob. It's not opening. Why not? Okay, so there's a problem. Now, when I connected my laptop to the car, I saw that there were some uh, faults on the uh, some errors we're coming up to do with power, and those errors are to do with current drain. So that means that somewhere one of these door handles is draining the battery, and but what it's doing is it's sending a signal to actually disarm or uh, sorry to disable this uh, easy entry you know with the with the key fob in your pocket so i'm going to show you how to solve this problem right so the process is to go one by one removing the door handle disconnecting it and seeing if that error keeps coming back the error of the continuous current drain so i'm going to now remove this door handle unplug it clear the errors on my uh, control unit and then i'm going to see if um if the comfort access keeps giving that error, I mean, basically, I'm assuming that the uh, the door handle is actually faulty. Maybe some of the wires are touching, and it's actually it's telling the power module to put it into you know to turn it off because it should be on. Like for example, here I am. There's the key fob and one open. It means it's disabled this thing. I think what happens is it gets to a certain amount of errors and then it cuts it out. For example, if you clear your errors. Uh, what will happen is uh, this will work but you'll find that after two hours when the um, signal is sent to the control the, the power module saying it's still draining the battery it kind of cuts this off and it will do that cycle about 20 times until it actually cuts off the the, the um, keyless entry completely that's my experience on this car which happens to be an E65 BMW all right, so here is an example of the errors. You can see the um, A158, A161, 163. I can't recall which is specific to current drain, maybe all of them. But anyway, those are the errors that keep popping up on my system. And I think that's got to do with the comfort access draining. And why I think that is because the comfort access will work for about two hours. And then if the car's been parked for a long time it won't work so it's almost like the current drain continues and then the power module sees hey there's still current being drawn here block that uh, that uh, that device okay so on my car it was working perfectly then what started happening is it worked for a short period of time and the car was parked for a long period of time it stopped working so now it doesn't work at all so it went from working perfectly to only working if you've been in the car recently to not working at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and then see, I'm going to clear the error and then see if it still uh, gets that power drain error. So this is a very lengthy process because you've got to remove it, let the car go to sleep. Remember that even in sleep mode when the car is off, uh, this should still remain active, meaning it should still pick up the... Uh, the, the signal of the key fob being within about one meter of the car. So I'm going to do this one by one. So first step is to remove this door uh, handle. Okay, to get this uh, door handle off, there's a little plate there and there is a little space, a little hole, and the hole is there to uh, help you when you want to put the door handle back on because when you put it back on, you're going to hook a little wire and pull on it. So that means to get it out, you have to push this little plate in and slide it along. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get the screwdriver and just wedge it on the little hole so that I can push that plate in. Okay, so there you can see the plate I'm talking about. You see that one? This you would hook in when you want to put it back. So right now I want to push it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push against the plate. You see there you can see it. There's the edge of that plate. You see that's it. I'm just pushing against it. That's it. So I'm going to now use a screwdriver. I'm going to get the screwdriver kind of in that hole there. Um, there you see there that hole there and then using the screwdriver and a little tap on a hammer i'm going to push this little sliding plate in and note i didn't hit it hard with the hammer right so this now comes out a uh, little bit of fidgeting here peel it out uh, there's some wires so i'm just going to peel these uh, loosen these wires one Two. Okay, so what you want to do now is you have to inspect the condition of the wires. 
So let's start with the wires that are at the doors on the door here. Um, I'm just seeing there's no tears in these uh, uh, insulators. Uh, looking there, it's looking fine. I don't see any oxidizing here. So overall, I'm happy with the condition of this. And if you look at the door handle wires, I really am seeing something that I don't like. If you look close to, you'll see it's going green. That means it's oxidizing. It means that there's current leaking onto this, which is the chassis. And that's kind of the negative or the earth. Well, well it's not earth, but it's the negative. So what's happening is you can see how, look how tight this is. Somebody has twisted this way too much. And I can already see, look, there's a tear just over there. Um, and if you can see it on the yellow, so immediately I can see that this door handle is faulty. Maybe I'm lucky and this is the one that is shorting my uh, comfort access system to ground and actually causing the battery control unit, the uh, power module, to keep receiving an error of leakage current. You see what is happening is the current is leaking into the chassis, maybe even further inside there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open this and actually repair it. All right, so there you can see I'm now quickly reading the errors and you can see if I go to the power module. Okay, so if you come look here, you can see the uh, uh, power module. Look at that, A158, A161, A163. And those are the errors I'm talking about. And you can see it says 21, 21, 21. I am under the suspicion that when it gets to a certain amount of errors, it actually blocks the the uh, feature on the car. So I'm going to clear the errors and then um, I'm going to let the car go into sleep mode and see if these errors, the power errors, uh, keep coming back. You see now, let's just read quickly. Okay, so right now there's no errors on this, on this vehicle and um, that's kind of an uncommon thing on bmw okay that's supposed to be a joke haha <laughs> okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to let the car go into uh, sleep mode and see if the error comes back if the error is gone completely well then guess what that was the problem door i got it right first time if it wasn't i'll have to do the, the, the passenger side and then eventually go around the car to the back as well so there's the problem you can see look at these wires um, you can even see it's going green now the green means it's oxidizing oxidizing means when a leakage current uh, touches onto the chassis this in this case this is all at zero volts the chassis and it's like a trickle current and it starts to uh, oxidize meaning that um, uh, there's live voltage sitting here and it starts to discolor so what i'm going to do is i've got to open this uh open this part here get in there fix these wires maybe put some heat shrink on and that's it all right so first thing is uh, this has already been repaired so i'm just going to cut away this little holder which happens to be a cable tie and there you can see this thing is wound a bit too uh firmly uh, there's some tape here i'm just going to remove that all right so there i can see the wires um, the condition is not too bad, but I'm sure once I've opened this, I'll see that uh, it's probably even worse inside. But there is a tear, um, so obviously that's been touching in the, in the, on the chassis. See, there's an actual tear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this thing. So this is how you open it. First thing is release the spring. Okay, my advice is to lift the spring from this side because this is plastic. Very easy to break this plastic while this side is metal, uh, not as easy to break the metal. So I'm going to get it that side. Right, the spring is now released and you can see how this thing is actually now quite loose. So what we have to do is we are trying to get to this part here, which means we have to remove this arm well, this uh, metal piece from the plastic one. So that means that this, you see, I'm pushing this little pin. I'm going to slide it through and look at that. That's allowing me to release. Uh, just be careful. There are two things here that also have to be released. Okay, so you want to uh, open these little Allen keys here. It's actually a Torx, but an Allen key will work. Okay, now you can see there is a uh, shaft blocking this uh, 
uh, handle from coming out. So we have to m move the shaft through. So that's under quite a bit of force and you'll find on the other side, a uh, similar thing. There's a little shaft that is uh, going between both these sides. All right, so I'm just putting a little bit of WD. Okay, when I said a little bit, uh, I mean it. And a little bit there. Alright, so all you need to do is you, I put my screwdriver on the side there and I'm just going to tap it and notice I'm just using basic tools. I'm not coming here with a hammer, although obviously you should use a hammer. Just in the back of the pliers, I'm just showing you how lightly I'm tapping this. I'm not whacking this in here because you'll break this, this entire fitting. And you can see it's already coming out the other side there. And if you want to, you could um, right. So the one is out now, and there's one at the bottom. And what you can do is you can use the uh, screwdriver again and just tap the bottom one out. So I'm just going to gently tap that one out. And there you can see it's coming through at the back. You need to get both of these out. And there it's completely out. So that part is now done. You can see I have the two uh, shafts out that are like the holding pins and now this door handle could actually come out I don't know if you see that it is coming out there um, I can see there is some damage on those wires all right so you just left with this other side here um, again you've got a shaft here you don't have to release the shaft you can uh, just wiggle this this one I'm not able to get out and I don't want to force it but I have done this before and I'm able to get this handle part out without removing that uh, shaft and this is uh, why I have actually removed that spring because now I'll just release that giving me a bit of free play here you can see now uh, unfortunately so you can see now because I've released this it's giving me free play here, but just be careful. If you just bend it like this, you're going to snap that off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to gently release this part here. Uh, I can only do it once that has been released from that uh, um, this shaft here and, and remove the spring loading. Okay, so I'm just gently pulling this apart. You can see, uh, ideally you should have taken this pin out, but mine is fused there, not able to get it out. So I'm just going to wiggle this a bit and hopefully just get this out without having to move that pin. You can see it's almost out. I'm just gently, even with my hand, just twisting this a bit. Uh, look at that. You see, I'm coming at an angle like that. So I did not damage that. All right, so that is now off and can see the handle allows me to uh, pull it out completely that feeds in there so this is your uh, door handle now as you can see unfortunately uh, this is uh, is broken I can just stick that back on I'm not too worried about that but here is the problem yes look at that so these wires especially there look at that yellow one completely twisted uh, damage and I'm going to show you how to repair this so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to open this metal, this part here. Uh, this is a very, very small, uh, actually a Torx, very small. You could probably open it with an Allen key. Okay, so this is a size 1.3 Allen key. I'm just turning this. A little screw here. Okay, the Allen key is working, but I'm just going to use the correct tool because it's much easier to get a grip. This is a Torx. This is a, uh, what number is this? This is a T4. Okay, but as I said, the Allen key will work. It does, uh, it does grab onto the head. Right, are there any more screws? No, now we can peel this open very gently, keeping in mind that this has probably been closed uh, since the car was manufactured. Yeah, and there it's starting to come again. Don't force anything. Uh, this is a, like a, almost an aluminium 
uh, like a foil finish. It's like it's still plastic, but it's just got like a foil um, finish. I think just to pick up your charge uh, when you touch the car. There we go. So there we there we have it. A uh, little foil finish uh, handle, and there is what seems to be a weighted part, and you can see there's the wires coming in to this uh, this part over here. All right, so inspecting these wires, the the red is perfect. There's no problem. The yellow is damaged. Uh, the brown. Also a bit damaged as well, and uh, the white, the white looks fine. Okay, so I'm just doing a pressure test. What that means is I'm holding the base of the wire and I'm just pulling on it to see if it's actually just snapped, um, and it's actually not. And this one, I just want to see if it's maybe snapped in there, and if it was the. Uh, Plastic would kind of just stretch. No, why is still in there? No, still fine. And yeah. Also still fine. Okay, so in this case there aren't any tears here. Now, if this was broken, you'd have to uh, solder it and maybe use some heat shrink just to repair this. I do have a video showing that. Uh, some very fine heat shrinks will work. And then you actually just uh, put the heat shrink over the little solder joint. But in this case, these wires are fine. What's happened is there. That little uh, tear of it just over there is the problem. So I've cleaned it with thinners just to get any oil off. Remember, I did uh, use some oil to uh, get in here. And also, look, this part here is broken. And that's probably also why the comfort access is giving problems. And remember, I said it is like a foil. See? If you listen to that, this is like a dipped in a, a foil uh, to conduct. So what we've got to do is we've got to make sure that this remains in good con contact. And you can see that it touches the whole chassis um, of the, of the uh, handle. So that's important because when you touch this, uh, remember that the, your hand touch also activates the, the comfort access system. So... Uh, this is part of the repair. Now, I don't want these wires shifting around like that anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tape, which is also going to hold that piece. So I'm just putting a very strong tape. This is called uh, um, panel beaters uh, tape. Well, why I call it panel beaters tape is panel beaters use it. This is a very strong tape. You can even stick a spoiler on your car with such a tape. And then I'm going to put this back. Right, now I will deal with that later. And now can you see, I'm going to, before I do that, I'm just going to wrap this one wire. Um, also making sure that it doesn't touch that, uh, that foil. That's one of the reasons why I've put the tape there. So I'm just going to wrap this yellow wire as this problem one. And I haven't done a very good job there, but I do think that it will solve the problem. Okay, now the only thing is I didn't pull the tape top part off. So, okay, so there are the wires. Now I'm going to just spread them nicely like that. See, look at that. And I don't want the tape to come out the side there, so I'm just going to have to cut it now. And this is really sticky tape. Okay, so actually what I'm going to do is just wrap it. It's all wrapped in there. Now I can put the other cover on. Right, so what I've done here is I've just soldered that. Now, in your case, you wouldn't have had a broken piece. I actually soldered this onto that 
Here's a solder, but I'm not, uh, I didn't video it because um, yours wouldn't be broken. If yours is broken, just solder it, but be very careful. It melts the plastic very quickly. And believe it or not, the solder is actually holding it in place from there to there. So I've actually now got a solder joint here, making sure that when you touch here, it's actually conducting along this path. Okay, whether that's a mandatory step, I don't think so. I don't know. Um, I didn't design this thing, but I just wanted to make sure that if this thing was... Um, coated with some foil well i just wanted to make sure it was still joined to the rest of the handle okay so we've got to put this thing on now now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to get the orientation correct there we go i'm just put the wires in like the mouth there and you can see how it slides in there and this one i have to do this while it's still in the open position you see there Right, so there we can put it. Okay, now the other side has popped out. Yeah. So there you see, ready for those two pins, and here, ready for that pin. So there's the one, and just slot this in here. Now, if you're concerned that these pins have gotten a bit rough, just take some sandpaper and just smooth them out so they go in a little bit smoothly. point you want to make sure that you've got this in alignment because you don't want to damage that plastic so what you're going to do is just make sure that this thing is seated inside there and enough this thing's got to be down hmm? a little ago how many times two goes into six how many times two goes into six? And itself. Yeah, how many times two goes into itself and how many times two goes into six? Huh? Okay, look here. Yes, how many times two goes into six? And how many times two goes into itself? Okay, so you want to press this down. Remember that mine is under a little bit of pressure because I've put that tape there. So I'm just going to help it. Right. So they are both in now. One and two. Uh, you can see there's the wires. They have now uh, fixed. And I've also put this tape to stop the uh, wires, remember they had to tear on them from touching the foil. So there we go. And I can put this bar back in, keeping in mind that the spring has to come here. You can press this in with your hand at this point. Right, so there's the door handle, back to how it was. All right, so if you're wondering how this works, what happens here is, do you remember that I showed you the inside of this? That is actually a, uh, what do you call it, a, a ferrite. It's probably got wires around it. And there is a post. And that post for me is it's basically like a current transformer. So when you shift it around here, there's a voltage probably present here. And when you move it like that, it actually induces a, 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 a electromagnetic uh, force and um, it changes the voltage telling the car okay someone's opening the door see there so that is why there's that inner that that and it, it goes all the way into here all right so that's the mechanism of operation now i just got to press this uh, a little pin in here just be careful this is, is aluminium so you got to be careful i'm actually going to support it there at the back while i tap it okay there we go Okay, so this one is basically done. Um, as you can see, all I need to do is just put that in there 
and make sure that these wires don't get caught in anything. So I'm going to wrap them now with the insulation tape so that they don't get caught between anything. There we go. And uh, because that clip is broken, I'm just going to put a cable tie here, just like I had had in the past. Just like that. Right, so this is now ready. Uh, it's repaired and I can now um, put it back on the car. Now, if you by mistake broke something, you see there's a bit of a tear. Unfortunately, these things do happen. There's a bit of a tear. I'm just going to build that up with some uh, epoxy just to make sure that this does not break. Uh, first thing I just need to do is just always rough it up. Um, when you want to use epoxy, it must be on a rough surface. Just make sure you don't glue um, too much onto that, otherwise in future you won't be able to open it. So I'm just going to put the cue bond kind of like that. Okay, so this is the cue bond. Okay, so I've repaired that little crack there. Um, as you can see, it's gonna handle me pulling on this very roughly. I'm trying to break it, can't break it. Now it's time to go and put this back on the car. And if you've got this, it's a little contact chemi bottle and all it does is it uh, cleans the electrode. Just pour a little bit there and there on those wires there. And if you've got this little contact chemi bottle, uh, it just uh, removes any oxidization, uh, oxidation and spray a bit there and there just to um, remove any oxide that is formed on those conductors. Okay, so the door lock is ready to come back. Now, one thing you want to do is go and do a error check. So I'm going to quickly put the laptop on and quickly see if I've uh, got those errors. The car has been sitting, it's been a whole day, I've driven around, yeah, funny enough I drove without the handle and here is the repaired um, the repaired door ha door handle and I'm going to quickly check if there are still errors there okay so you can see the time is now 3 43 p.m. much later in the day I've even driven my car I'm now going to quickly just uh, check if those errors are cleared okay so what we're looking for is the power module Okay, so look at that. Uh, power module, no errors. So that meant that by disabling that door handle, um, I've actually found the correct door. The door that is giving problem happened to be the one I did first. So I was very lucky there. Uh, if it wasn't, I would have had to have gone around the car and keep doing the same procedure of trying to uh, check each door handle and fixing one by one to make sure there are no errors. Now, since there are no errors, I can now put it back on. No power errors, no comfort access errors, there's no errors. I can now put the door handle back on and guess what? It will probably, uh, my comfort access will probably work the way it should have. Okay, so to put, plug these back in is quite easy. Only can go one way. So that one is going there. See, won't allow me. Oh, there you are, that way, that's going there. And this one is going like that. Okay, so they're in. All I have to do is now insert this uh, the wrong way around. Uh, just be careful of the, the orientation, the way you uh, fold these wires. Uh, just check that everything is fine, yes, and now I can just put this. Look how I'm sliding it in there. A bit of a wiggle. 
uh, you might have to you see what, what I did there I actually I'm pulling it a little bit okay check it out it has not engaged it's not correct it's not getting it right there we go check it yes Okay, now we got to pull that uh, little lever. Okay, so there you can see the movement of this uh, little plate that I'm pulling. Okay, so let me just release it. Uh, and can you see that I can, I can actually bend that? That's very important because that thing gets stuck on the corner of the door handle underneath and it won't move. There we go. Right, so a bit of wiggling and also twisting like this. Uh, and just give it another quick pull and it's it's tight all right so you've repaired the comfort access you put it back you check the errors the errors are gone but it still doesn't work okay so now what do you do you see i've now gone around the car and i have disconnected one by one um, until the comfort access works. So I've actually disconnected three out of the four door handles and look at this. See now it works perfectly. There's the key locked and in my pocket and there's the comfort access. It, and even locks, look at that, perfect. So I can see that this handle, even with the soldering, has, is functioning 100%. Now I've got to find out what is wrong with these other handles. One of them is a problem. And just to show you, I've taken out all the handles. Um, I'm not getting the power drain error anymore, but it's still not working. The comfort access is still not working. So I've had to un uh, disconnect each handle one by one. So what I'm going to do now is reconnect one handle one by one, also after having inspected it. So I'm going to show you how to inspect it, and then I'm going to reinstall each one one by one okay so i'm going to start on the right hand side of the car um, what i'm looking for is these wires are these wires damaged is there any green here um, looking inside here looking here there's no tears on the wires it's still got a lot of flexibility here um, the door handle itself is fine so this one looks good in good order i'm going to put this one back now uh, and just by the way you know for future to making this future fault proof i'm just going to drop some glue in there because this uh, movement here eventually scratches on the uh, steel at the back there and i use the word steel loosely it's plastic covered with a foil coating i often find that it tears here and that's where the problem is because there's a bit of movement there see, especially underneath there as well so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put a little bit of uh, glue there yeah you see it's starting to uh, wear on those wires but the con the uh, jackets are still fine so i'm just going to drop some glue in there to make sure that that doesn't wear any further okay i'm just using some cold glue just a security glue um just put it here, just a dot there, and on the other side. And now I'm just taking the screwdriver and making sure that it goes in nicely. Um, and you can also see I'm I'm letting the the glue surround the wires so that they don't move around. Okay, so that is now done, and I'm now going to install this handle. And you see that the, this handle is functional. Um, you can see how I've connected it, but not uh, I haven't placed it inside yet. Look, I'm going to lock the door by pressing on it. You see, you can hear it locking. I don't know if you can see it locking. And I'm just going to. Ah, it's perfect. So there's nothing wrong with this one. Um, I'm just going to put this one back. All right. So just putting this back in. Always a bit of a struggle. There we go. Just make sure before you put it in that this thing can move. So see. Yes. Yes, you want to you want to check that this thing isn't propped out. If it's propped out, you've installed it with something in the way. Okay. 
Okay, so now I've refitted this. I just want to check it. Here's the remote. Uh, oh, perfect. Perfect. So, um, if you find yourself forcing it, you haven't installed this properly. And uh, you can see, look at that. Perfect comfort access. And I'll just test the front door again just to make sure. Perfect. And the locking. Perfect. Right, let's go around to the next door. Okay, so same story. Inspect it. Have a look. Um, I'm seeing some gouging in the wires here, but I'm not seeing uh, torn wires. I'm just seeing that it's getting worn out. I'm going to put the glue. I'm going to follow the same procedure, connect it up, and see if when I install this, this door is going to work. Perfect, so it locked. Perfect. Now this door is a little bit different. The coding for this door is that you, uh, you, as you can see, there's the remote. I pull it once and it unlocks and then the second time it actually opens a door. So this has got to do with coding. It's nothing wrong with the door handle itself. Um, I just want to see that it locks the a little, um, the, the, the lock pin there, just see if it goes down. Yes, you, I'm sure you can hear that, it, it went down. So this one is actually fine. So that brings me to the last one, which means it's the front uh, left. Right, so here is the uh, front passenger. Right, and just having a look at this, um, okay, this has been repaired before. Um, just looking at these wires. Oh, look at that. There we go. So there's a dead wire there, so now I'm going to go put this on the desk and fix this. Um, this is the reason why my comfort access hasn't been working. And unfortunately, why it's so difficult to resolve this is, as you can see, I had two faults. Uh, the power drain on the one side and a literally open circuit on the other side. No wonder nothing was solving this problem. All right, I'll show you how to fix this and then uh, hopefully I'll have the comfort access back in time for the party. Okay, so we want to work there. Unfortunately, you're going to have to strip this thing. You're going to have to pull out these pins. Uh, you can see this one is, is actually broken here. Uh, so this is uh, not affecting the comfort access, but uh, obviously the last person who did this was rough, i.e. myself. Uh, you can put a little bit of uh, oil just so that it comes out a bit easier. Just on these holding pins. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, unfortunately, I'm just going to have to cut these. Um, it's probably a good idea to cut them at slightly different lengths so that the bulges where the solder is uh, happens at different places. Uh, but that would be first prize, but unfortunately, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. Uh, let's just cut this brown one about there. Just be careful not to damage there, because otherwise then you're going to be cutting into the little, what, what seems to be a ferrite. Um, and that's going to be not so fun. 
Okay, so there, those are actually fine. You can see I've now uh, opened them. I can tin them and get them ready. Um, you should use wire strippers at this point. Okay, there, there's all the the wires. This one is, this brown wire is completely corroded. So I'm just filing it down with some sandpaper. Otherwise the solder won't uh, get on this, won't uh, bond to this. Now, because it's fatter, these wires are fatter, one needs to grind this down. I did grind this down um, at an earlier point, and it's going to need to be ground down a little bit more. Okay, so there is the tape. Um, the handle is ready to go back in. Uh, this is probably a bit too short because I can just see that type of movement there. I should have made fly leads. Um, so if you do this, rather just extend the wires. Okay, so it's in here. Um, as you can see, the moving side is this one. This one moves as well, but not as much because you can see um, how this angle 
uh, the amount that it comes out is less there than here because this is raised a bit higher. So you can consider making this much longer, then you won't have this problem again. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do that now, but I am going to put some glue here to make sure that this thing um, is actually kind of stuck so that it won't move in the future. Our weakest point is now here because that's where the motion will be and that's quite easy to join. Now that that will be fixed, I probably will never have to open that again um, and the glue will then also stop those wires from shifting as well as this little double-sided tape won't allow those wires to shift any further. When you're trying to push this in, you've got to make sure that that handle is pressed down. Otherwise, you're just going to hit this onto the side of that and you're going to damage it. So you're going to see what I'm going to do now. Now, unfortunately, this was broken in the past, but it's still a requirement to put on because this is what stops the handle from... Uh, from actually um, f hitting this this end, you can see there on this side it's being stopped here, which is not which is incorrect. This thing is the stopper. This thing hits uh, somewhere about right there, and it kind of hits that thing. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to use a little like epoxy and actually glue this thing on. you see so it's not going to move because the cue bond is there um, I'm happy with that now I just need to put the spring in Okay, so there we go. Um, it's moving now, but as I said, when this dries, the only movement is going to be here. Now, please, if you're going to do this, don't leave it as short as I've done it. Um, cut these and make them longer. Make long fly leads and then just wrap them around somewhere here. Okay, so moment of truth here. Um, I haven't installed it fully. I haven't pushed the plate in, but I just want to test it. Uh, let's see. Yes, that's locking and oh wonderful so press it in yes locked all right locked unlocked press locked perfect lock 100 percent Right, so that's how you sort out the comfort axis on your BMW. In my case, I had two faults. I had a leakage current here, which kept, which kept coming up with that uh, battery drain problem that I fixed. And on the other side, we had two completely open-circuited wires. All right, hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching. Cheers.